PCIe Gen 5 SSDs have arrived, and in this video we're not only going to be testing one, but we're going to be doing a full comparison versus everything that came before it to actually see whether these are worth buying for gaming, because obviously they are the fastest drives you can get, but bearing in mind you probably need a new motherboard to actually achieve these speeds, you're going to have to pay an awful lot of money to actually get one, and you have a nasty little surprise on some of them that we'll be talking about in just a second. Could they possibly be worth the asking price? Let us start gathering up all of our drives and start our testing right after a short word from this video's sponsor. Corsair's IQ Link is here to revolutionize your gaming PC. This brand new ecosystem stops cable clutter in its tracks, with interconnecting components removing the need for endless cables and giving you more control over your PC than ever before. Grab some interlocking QX RGB fans for dual light loop beauty, an H150i IQ Link cooler for next level CPU thermals, and connect up to a whopping 14 devices to a single IQ system hub. Learn more today with the link down below. Now, I do want to begin this with not just a little moan, but, but a huge one. Because ADATA have sent this one over for testing. This is the brand new Legend 970. It is a ridiculously fast SSD that I've managed to achieve 10,000 megabytes a second on both the reads and writes with. But I am pretty miffed because I think this is actually quite a misleading product. Because what do you notice on this box? It looks like a normal SSD, right? Well, it does actually have a fan inside it, which is fair enough. A lot of them do, because Gen 5 drives do produce a lot of heat. But what you don't see on pretty much any of the marketing material is the horrible, horrible red SATA cable that you actually need to drive the fan. Listen to the noise. Why is it so loud? It's not even doing anything. It's sitting in the desktop right now. I do not want to use it like this. It is really quite frustrating and the fact that it doesn't show the SATA bright red cable on the box I think is a bit of a joke. The way that this is going to work is we're going to run a few different games, five in total, two that actually have direct storage that is hopefully going to take full advantage of the faster drives and give us better performance. We're going to start with our Gen 5 drive. This is a two terabyte one, so we're giving this the best advantage really that we can have. And the game that we're going to start with is actually the newest one in our test suite. This is some Alan Wake 2, and the system that we're running has 32 gig of DDR5 RAM with a 7900 XTX, but crucially that PCI Gen 5 SSD. I need a stopwatch. Here's an iPhone. Ever heard of this? And go. So we're hoping this is gonna be ridiculously quick. We have Editor Carl with the full timings. So you can do a comparison. Oh, there we go. I mean, that is very quick. And I will get a little bit ahead of the game here and say that what you're seeing on screen will probably be ever so slightly different to my slightly inaccurate stopwatch figures. We'll actually be looking at the full timestamps of the footage to make sure it's as realistic as it can be. So if I say 11, but it's actually like 10, 58 or something, that's what's accurate rather than my human error. Everyone's gonna be so jealous. Look at my high tech notepad. Remember pen and paper? I mean, to be fair as well, the next game is RTC. And I was reading that and I forgot for a second what it was. And I'm now really disappointed that it's not Roller Coaster Tycoon. It's actually Ratchet and Clank. Direct storage though. So here we go once again then. And we hit resume. Stopwatch is going. Whoa, that was ridiculously quick. Honestly, don't know what to say. That is Gen 5 in a nutshell. If it could do that to all of your games, it would definitely be worth the money. But just with due diligence, I'm now gonna close the game and actually open it up one more time just to make sure that anything hasn't been preloaded because that is ridiculous. Let's go. Yeah, 1.6 that time. Can you believe it? <laughs> I'm so excited to test the other SSDs now. But it's not just raw load speed that's actually really cool about direct storage because this is one of the few games that will take advantage of the tech actually in the game as well. You'll find that there are actually portals located through the game world that you need to almost pull yourself into a new dimension in. And if you don't have a drive that's fast enough, then you'll get this horrible stutter in almost a bit of a loading screen while it actually loads in the assets for you to sort of dive through. Whereas if you run a faster drive, so basically a PCIe SSD, then you'll find that all of the assets can load in the background and then you have that seamless transition into the next stage. And this is something that I'm sure we will see in most games in the not too distant future. We're definitely on that transition, that cusp at the moment. Personally speaking though, whenever I think of game load speeds and maybe titles that take a little bit longer than I'd like, the main one that comes up time and time again isn't brand new, but it's still incredibly revel relevant relevant it is Civ 6 gathering storm let's click on our save and load our bad boy up now i'm guessing this is going to be around about 20 seconds or so i mean i admit i have 
kind of cheated because I was loading this in on the Steam Cloud and I realized that then wouldn't be a valid test. So I've made a quick save, but as soon as this circle kind of disappears slash appears, we're done. There we go, boom. So around about 18 seconds or so. So actually for reference, that saves about four seconds off loading it directly from the Steam Cloud. That's not a quick loading game, but is that really gonna impact your life at all? Especially bearing in mind as well that you only need to do this once per session. So just like open up your phone. That's not even a TikTok video. Maybe that's a WhatsApp message. Right, next title please, some Planet Zoo. This one is for you, Thea. Don't say I don't ever do anything for you. Go. And honestly, I, I'm going to say and put it out there, this is probably going to be very similar to Civ. I can't expect this to be a particularly quick loading game. It's just another one of those ones where game load technology isn't exactly at the forefront of the development. Oh, there we go. I mean, that is pretty similar. I got 1683, but I imagine the exact figure again is slightly lower than that. Not too bad, but with speeds up to 10,000 megabytes a second, if I'm honest, I did expect a little bit better. But let's move on now to our final game and another one that also has direct storage to help speed everything up, some Forspoken. And I think this is gonna be very quick again. Go. Wow. You see, do you see the difference that direct storage makes? That is genuinely insane. That's two games out of two that are coming in around about the two second mark, almost too quick to actually use a manual stopwatch. That is very impressive. And I do also wanna stress that well, I stressed this out whilst we were off camera and I got a few different temperature readings and it is very, very astounding just how much heat this thing can generate. I mean, there's more memory on this. A two terabyte drive is gonna generate more heat than a one terabyte, but you can see why they equipped this with a fan because without it, we were hitting about 76 degrees or something, whereas we're hitting a peak of about 60 with the fan running. But generally speaking, 60 degrees is the sort of limit where SSDs will start to thermal throttle a bit and you'll lose a bit of performance. And if it hits maybe 75, 80 degrees, degrees you could severely reduce the life of your SSD. So you can see why they equip it with a fan. My advice would be to use it. But let's jump straight back into our games now and remember we're testing the P400 from Patriot and I would call this almost like your PlayStation 5 replica drive as we're getting around about 5,000 megabytes a second on the reads and then about 4,800 on the right and this is pretty similar to what you get over on Team PlayStation. And the time to beat, or I suppose match, is about one and a half seconds, 1.6. Let's do it. Basically exactly the same. I've got 1.8 there, but again, margin of error, pretty much exactly the same. Hmm. Mr. Alan Wake 2, let's see what you got. Go. The tension is killing me. I mean, this is, I'm not gonna say make or break, but I think this will be quite representative of most games. Uh, that was actually slightly quicker. That was about nine and a half seconds there. So it's another title that essentially doesn't really see any meaningful difference anyway, right, between Gen 5 and Gen 4. So while direct storage definitely does make things very interesting, and I do have a feeling that those slower SSDs are gonna start to come away a bit, we're kind of still in that same narrative really that faster drives are great, but do they necessarily translate into better gaming performance? 2.68 to match. 2.85. All the drives are the same so far. Now copying across the files to our SATA drive, the MX500 from Crucial, it took so much longer than transferring it between the PCIe drives, it's ridiculous. So surely we are now going to see quite a big difference in terms of performance, right? This is 500 meg basically on the reads and writes. 1.6 seconds to beat. Go, 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 go! It's definitely slower! It's slower, but it's still three and a half seconds. Direct storage, even with a SATA SSD, three and a half seconds. That is mint. And what about for spoken? Three and a half seconds still. Like, honestly, I didn't expect to see these numbers. I definitely thought we'd see something more dramatic. Again, though, it is worth remembering that with a SATA SSD, you are likely to run into issues with the most modern games, especially ones that do use direct storage, because as soon as they do start trying to load in loads of assets all at the same time, you do run yourself the risk of it not being able to actually keep up with what the game essentially wants to do. And then comes the point of the video that I've not really been looking forward to, 
Going back to our hard drive, and obviously the reason that you'd be using this is because either it's a hand-me-down, you need extra space, or you just wanna buy something that has the largest capacity possible and you're not fast about speed. It's so slow. But at least you can't hear the noise of the hard drive over that ridiculous fan on the Gen 5 SSD. Oh, look at this. Oh, it's stuttering already. Right, okay, go. The SSDs win. <laughs> the SSDs definitely win. Oh, you see, look at this. Oh, it's stuttery. It's stuttery. It's a mess. Having a faster drive does make a big difference. But crucially, that difference is much larger between hard drives and SATA, and then to a lesser extent, SATA to PCI Gen 3. But everything after that does typically tend to be very similar. I mean, yes, it is gonna vary from game to game. As we've mentioned countless times, direct storage is the future, and it is gonna take full advantage of these faster drives. But typically, anything in the realms of around about 5,000 megabytes a second or faster is gonna be the target because crucially that is what the consoles use and that is what game developers will be aiming for. Gen 5 is fantastic when it comes to raw performance but clearly the compromise here at the moment is just too much. There's no point spending more money on something for what is essentially going to be real world no extra performance. I mean you might see more differences over time but that is precisely the point. Why spend more money for future benefits when you could get those benefits in the future for less money when the price of the drives come down. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. What did you make of our tests? Is there more on this that you want us to go in in the future? Did you see this coming? Did you see the SATA actually holding up as well as it did? We'd love to hear from you, so let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Absolutely smash the like button if you've enjoyed this video. Get yourself subscribed because 85% of you aren't. It would really help out and help you to hit that little subscribe and bell down below. And of course, if you do want to check out current pricing on any of these SSDs, as well as some of my favorites and ones that are on sale, you can find these listed down below with our Amazon affiliate links. And of course, while you're down there, why not bask in the beauty of Corsair's new IQ Link? This smart ecosystem eliminates those pesky RGB and fan cables from your system, allowing you to stack RGB devices with a smile. All the devices can be automatically set up and configured in iQ with some exclusive effects, and the new QX RGB fans even have a temperature sensor inside them for monitoring air temps. Get yours today with the link down below. But thank you so much for watching this video. We'll catch you in the next one.